Welcome, everyone, and hope you're really enjoying .NET Comp. We're so excited to be in the studio here today to talk about the roadmap of .NET Interactive and all the latest updates. Uh, to start off, my name is Alan Yu. I'm a senior PM on the Azure Data Team. And I'm Julie Cosmano. I'm a principal program manager in the business applications and platform team. And we're just really excited to just really tell you the story of how we got all these really awesome updates in .NET Interactive show a few demos and also make sure to answer any of your questions along the way. So make sure to post those questions and we'll make sure to cover those by the end of our talk. So one thing you might have noticed at the very beginning of our introductions is that we're not exactly on the .NET Interactive team. Um, however, we do represent different data teams that really do care about notebooks. And so you might be wondering, what exactly are notebooks? Why are we working with the .NET Interactive team and why is it so important for our teams to collaborate? And so to kind of start off with an introduction of notebooks, uh, notebooks are essentially these very interactive documents that contain both executable computer code cells and also rich text cells with markdown. So it leads to these really beautifully, beautifully formatted documents that also allow users to kind of walk through your data story. And so if you have like data analysis that you want to do or data preparation you want to do, that's really how notebook has been shining, especially in the data science. And so if we kind of take a step back and think about, you know, for me, I work on Azure Data and also the SQL Server team. Uh, we've worked on shipping an experience called, or a product called SQL Server 2019. And what, this was the first time that SQL and Spark both shipped together. And as an experiences team, we thought right away we have to support notebooks in our main GUI tools. And so on this journey of, uh, yeah, uh, implementing notebook support, initially we just supported Python and thought that's all that the data scientists would need. However, as we demoed more with, uh, uh, demoed more of these notebooks to our SQL community, they just kept asking us like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. When are we gonna have SQL support for it? Uh, can we have the same kind of GUI features you would expect in a query editor, except inside of a Jupyter notebook? And so what we were able to do is turn something that, you know, there was a SQL experience with SQL magics, but it doesn't, have a lot of the GUI features that you would, that our users are expecting. And so, you know, this, this is how we start to invest in building lovable experiences. And so this led to a year of us just kind of on this journey of listening to our community. So this included things like focus groups, research studies, user calls, social media and GitHub issues to finally build the first ever T-SQL kernel inside of a Jupyter notebook. And this is the first time that included things like, you know, syntax highlighting, IntelliSense, uh, better ways of handling, tabu handling tabular data instead of having a deep knowledge of Python. And just making sure that the first time experience is just really seamless. And so, you know, on top of that, we also were able to bring PQL experiences into our notebooks as well. And so for us, we really do care a lot about these data-oriented uh, scenarios. However, as we continue to mature, mature this, you know, announcement and let the Jupyter community know that there are these SQL notebooks out there. Uh, we kept leaning in and wanting to learn more about what our customers are looking for. And so there was some of the quotes um, included things like, I want this kernel available in other notebook viewers and not just in our product Azure Data Studio. Um, they also want the ability to run SQL, PowerShell, KQL, or multiple languages all in the same notebook. Um, and at the same time, having syntax highlighting, IntelliSense, connection support, and tabular data support. And there's nothing like that out there right now. And so there was this really big opportunity for us to think about how do we work with other Microsoft teams? How do we work with the open source community to go build a solution like this? And that's where .NET Interactive comes in. Where .NET Interactive you know, is open source, included support for C Sharp, F Sharp, and PowerShell and also has the advantage of running all these languages inside the same notebook. And so, you know, this would also allow, like if we were to take these data or kernels that we supported, like SQL and KQL, and were to bring it into .NET Interactive, this would allow us to bring this language support in VS Code, Azure Data Studio, Synapse Studio, and even Code Spaces. And that's really the vision of why we've collaborated um, so much over this past year. And as we were on this journey, um, we saw how collaborative um, just the .interactive team was in terms of working with the PowerShell maintainers and thinking about, okay, you know, just in a hackathon project, let's go add this PowerShell support. And they went ahead and did that. And so for us, we were just like, you know what, let's just get some of our engineers work together with 
done an interactive scheme and just see what we can do. And it turns out we are able to add this T-SQL support, which we announced last March. And because we, you know, it's really about, <laughs> maybe it's a little bit cheesy about how much we're collaborating here, but this also gave us a direct pathway of how do we support KQL along the way too. And it kind of leveraged the same structure that we did to bring in T-SQL. So if we were to bring even more data languages into Donna Interactive in the future, we have a roadmap through Donna Interactive. And then finally, like we also, just from the Microsoft Global Hackathon, it's all virtual now, um, in the fall, we were able to get variable sharing support. So thinking about how do we not just ship like .NET objects or also ship these like, you know, data paradigms, how can they interact with each other? And that's what we did in this most recent, ha recent hackathon and something we're really excited to demo to all of you. And so, you know, if you want to take just like a quick, you know, screenshot here or you want to go tweet out something, this is the money shot. This is the main takeaway uh, from this whole presentation. Um, so we're announcing for the first time new language support for KQL and .NET Interactive. Super exciting and just kind of shows that we're going to continue to invest in more language support in .NET Interactive. We're also excited to announce variable sharing across C Sharp, F Sharp, PowerShell, T-SQL, and Kusto which is just amazing, the story of how we can bring all these languages together in the same notebook. Um, on top of that, just thinking about how do we work with our extension authors? We have such a vibrant community in the VS Code, um, community who are, care very much about you know, notebook renderers. And so we already we have a demo that I'll quickly show off here um, using the data table extension. Um, and on top of that, just continue to invest in T-SQL. I don't think we can evangelize that enough. Like, even from most recent user research studies, everyone is asking for more SQL support, more SQL support, more SQL support. Um, and then also, finally, as you may have heard, there is also code spaces support, which will now lead me into my demo here. So if I quickly hop over to here, as, oh, is this, that's the right one, right? Uh, that would be no, uh, the other one, the browser one. Oh, this one, okay. Yes, Ooh, oh, I have okay. to restart. <laughs> the beauty of second. live demo. <laughs> live demos. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so what we'll be showing here is that, uh, what do they call it? We're gonna show how Don Interactive Notebooks are working in GitHub code spaces, uh, okay. which is, uh, oh, right here. <laughs> uh, essentially, uh, you know, we want to show that this works on not just in VS Code or just in Azure Data Studio. This also works in code spaces. And so, you know, you could see right away we have all the important extensions that we need to have installed here. We have the .NET Interactive Notebooks extension, and we also have that aforementioned um, uh, data table extension support as well. And so if I kind of minimize here, um, for this demo, we're using this information from Chicago Speed cameras. And you can see right away that we are supporting uh, C Sharp. Um, I believe I should change this to .NET C Sharp. Oh, I need to restart the kernel. Uh, on the top part, I think you need to change to .NET Interactive. Oh, right. Should I do it? Should okay. I? No. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> what we have here is we already pre-ran this uh, notebook, um, and right now we're using the C-sharp kernel in this case, where it's basically, you know, we're taking all the information from this you know, JSON uh, formatted file, and then we're able to choose the output MIME type here to... Uh, the data summary one, I think. Data summary, that's yes. right. Yeah, and so, okay, the kind of special thing that we have as part of this down, thankfully <laughs> this one's showing off, is that you know, before when you saw Don Interactive, we mostly supported Interact, and that was the only kind of default visualizer that you could see inside of our uh, Don Interactive notebooks. However, we partnered with uh, Keras, in, in the maintainer of the data table extension, and that's how we're able to um, you know, remove that dependency on just Interact and allow for different visualizers that we could plug in. And that's just really the beauty of all this is that you know you have this multi-language support, you have this flexibility of working with the community, and yeah, that's kind of what we want to show off here in terms of code spaces. Awesome, that's a pretty cool demo, Alan. I really love how, um, for example, for you to get started, you only need to essentially um, start a browser, really. <laughs> if you go to GitHub and then choose code spaces, it will always um, uh, be there uh, for you to try it out. 
All right, so now I'm going to actually show you the, uh, the demo on KQL. So as some of you may already know, KQL is Kustokui language, and you use it to against Azure Data Explorer. So you type in uh, the cluster name and then the database name, and then you get connected. So that's generally how it works, but let me show you how that works in the .NET Interactive environment. So what I have here is a notebook with a KQL demo. I've already pre-run this cell, which actually just kind of downloads uh, the, uh, the interactive KQL, uh, the .NET Interactive uh, KQL extension. So all well and good. I make sure that I choose the right version there for the demo today. And then here's the fun part. Now, as you can see on the screen here, we are using the hash bank connect. So what that tells you is now you are going to connect to a specific language and a specific uh, uh, environment, so data source environment. So for example, in this one here, we're actually connecting to the help um, Azure Data Explorer uh, cluster and then uh, connecting to a database called samples. And I make sure that I call this kernel name Custo help because, and you can call it anything actually, but you want to name it so that you can refer to it uh, later. So here's an example where I'm using it. So let me just scroll down here. So as you can see, I'm using the hashbang kql custo help. So what that really means is I'm, I'm using the KQL language and I'm connecting to the custo help that I have established earlier. And I made sure as well that I call this weather data because I'm going to use it later. So it's a pretty simple KQL uh, query, and it's analyzing storm events data. So let's take a look here. Let's run it. So we get about 10 rows here, because I said limit 10. So it's going to get 10 rows. Now, this is, pretty, this is pretty cool, actually. Like now, as a person who actually love using you know, KQL language or SQL language, I don't have to learn you know, how to modify or had to come up with a you know, different language or different code to just query. I can use what I have learned or what I know and put it there in the .NET Interactive Notebook, and there it is. All I need to know is just a little bit of um, uh, this hash bang <laughs> magics, right, Alan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so I, um, I have the table results here, so that's good. Now, the next part here, this is where I find really super interesting. Now. I work with a lot of languages. In one day, I sometimes write in KQL, SQL, Python, C Sharp, <laughs> you name it. Well, maybe not so much C Sharp. I'm, I used to, but not, uh, not as much anymore. Um, anyway, so in this one here, like what if, you know, some languages actually have their strengths, right? So with KQL, it's obviously, you know, doing a lot of queries against Azure Data Explorer, but there are certain things that I wanted to do in C Sharp. Now, the cool thing about this, Right, where I could actually pass that value from the query that I ran earlier from KQL runtime to C Sharp. And I don't have to write much of C Sharp and since I'm very rusty in C Sharp. So let's, uh, let's give it a go here. So just to kind of uh, give you a bit of an overview here, I'm just using the hash bank share. So what it's going to do is like sort of kind of uh, tell the runtime here to say, hey, I'm going to start sharing something from another uh, another connection or another runtime, which is the KQL Crystal Help. And I want to pass in, remember I mentioned earlier weather data, so I'm going to start passing that weather data from KQL to uh, C Sharp here. So let's run this. I'm going to just do the, you know, just display the data as is. And there it is. Uh, it should be exactly the same as the ones that I showed you earlier 10 rows and exactly the same one. And if you're ever curious, I know that some of you are very curious people, so I'm just going to comment this out and run it again. So that's the data type that actually gets passed into uh, to C Sharp. OK, now on to slightly, I suppose, challenging uh, KQL query here. So I've got Storm Events, and I'm just doing some more sort of summarization, data summarization here. But I know that this is going to definitely return more than 10 rows. So I'm just going to quickly run it. And yep, lots of data. So now I can use the extension that, uh, that Alan mentioned earlier, which is the data table one. And I'm going to choose the, uh, the output to be data summary, because I just wanted to kind of quickly have a look at what the data looks like. So essentially profiling my data here. So I can see that it returns 71 rows. There are five categories in the event type and three categories in state, all without much of coding really. So that's actually really nice. Okay, I talk about KQL quite a bit. 
How about we try SQL? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's see the SQL support and all the improvements <laughs> there too. Yeah, so I've uh, been using SQL for a long time. It's uh, near and dear to my heart, so I have to show this off today. All right, so similar to what I showed you earlier, I had to load the KQL package. Now I'm loading the SQL Server one. So I've preloaded this, so I don't have to run it again. If you ever get stuck, by the way, just do the hashman connect mssql-h, which tells you how to type the connection or establish connection. So I've got one here already pre-established. So I'm just going to um, scroll down here to the SQL retail data. I'm going to call it, uh, yeah, SQL retail data here. Then let's do top 10 uh, data set. So because I actually ran the data summary earlier, so I'm going to just change it back to the built-in. There you go. Those are my essentially 10 rows of my uh, retail data. So that's pretty sweet. And what if we can do more interactive experience in .NET Interactive? So here we have interactive experience in .NET Interactive uh, <laughs> section of the notebook. All right, so um, let, me, let me show you what it does. So let me just kind of delete this because I think it's, it's going to be pretty cool um, to show you uh, in a little bit. So I'm just going to start with something simple. All right, so what I'm doing here is essentially anyone who's actually going to run this notebook, as long as they have access to the, uh, to the database server, you would be able to run this as if it's a little bit more interactive. So it's going to ask you, hey, what kind of stock group do you want to filter? So if I run this on the top here, let me just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that it's asking me, hey, enter stock group. So potentially, if you were to pass this notebook to somebody who might not know um, or might not want to know as much about the code side of it, they can just simply run it, and it gives you that kind of more friendly prompts. So over here, I love clothing, so I'm going to type in stock group clothing. Oop, I have to escape from that. <laughs> All right, now I can type in clothing, press Enter. So it's just going to type back the clothing uh, output here. And now, in my next uh, statement here, let me just remove this. So, aha, uh -huh, Copilot just snuck in there. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to do that though. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So what I'm doing here is just, again, please connect to my retail data connection that I mentioned earlier. And then let's share that input stock group. So remember earlier, I actually used the input stock group um, variable here and uh, share it here so that I can add it to my where clause. So that variable that was from C Sharp is now in SQL. So let's try running this. And you can see that it's actually declaring the right uh, data type. Very, very impressive. And it shows me that the clothing line has got 41% margin. So that's pretty cool. And what if, again, I mentioned that I'm a little bit rusty in you know, writing C-sharp. So uh, any best programmers would do this too, I believe. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. So here, I'm going to put, say, something like price, and then just change this to price. So you saw a sneak peek of me doing this earlier. So, <laughs> so input price here, and then woohoo. Look at uh, Copilot. Nice. It just tells me how to convert price into um, uh, into decimal. So let me just try this again. There you go. Convert dot to decimal price. Remember, I'm very rusty with my C sharp, so I'm just going to tap this <laughs> and copy and paste this part here. Cool. So that's input price. Now I want to make sure that I filter it here. So I want to make sure that those um, data that we analyze, uh, that data that we analyze, we're going to just filter the price. Uh, no, no copilot, not the, uh, not the customer ID. <laughs> Maybe the extended price. OK, so let me just do uh, IL here, and then dot extended price, and then greater than, which is the input price. So just tap that, just making sure that I also share it. So here, I'm going to put input 
price. So making sure that my variable names are correct. Yeah, input stock group, input price, it's all good. Now I'm ready to run the top part. So let's try this time around maybe toys. And then price to filter, let's say, what, $3? Let's try $3 here. And how about 3.12? So $3.12. So if I run this in SQL, Ooh, there's no results, <laughs> but that's okay. So yeah, so that's essentially how you share variables and you can choose to, um, to use different kind of data type in your variables. Yeah. Perfect. That's awesome, Julie. You just showed a <laughs> lot of really good things there. So let's make sure that we go ahead and summarize what we just saw. We're going to head back to our presentation. Um, so yeah, just going back in ter terms of the Donna Interactive announcements that you're really taking away from this session. Uh, we now have new language support for KQL, so definitely go check that out. Um, we also play around with the variable sharing. Just let us know through GitHub issues if there's like any other languages that you would like to see supported, um, or if there's you know, any kind of bugs that you notice, just feel free to reach out. Um, and yeah, just also kind of seeing the visualizers definitely in terms of the data table extension, T-SQL improvements, and all of this will eventually all show up in code spaces as well. Um, so now, if we think about the takeaways of just this talk overall and Don Interactive, um, Don Interactive is the multi-language notebook experience. So continue to see investments in terms of notebook innovations. Like this is where you should be looking in this space. Um, we're also always going to be working with the open source community, like Project Jupiter, to make sure that you know this these experiences light up wherever possible. Um, new language support is also along on the way. So just let us know if there's a language that you really want to see. Um, and yeah, really just a community is a critical part of this journey. Um, all of the languages and variable sharing, all these things came directly from you know, requests from the community. So we're just really happy to see this progress. If you want to learn more, check us out on GitHub. Um, you could go to .NET Interactive. And you can also search for the extension in VS Code and just try it out for yourself, also on Codespaces. Uh, feel free to follow us on Twitter. And yeah, happy to take any questions and thank you so much for joining. All right, I think we're ready to move into some questions. Thank you guys so much. That was such an interesting session. There's always a ton of uh, energy around .NET Interactive anywhere because it's so easy to get started. Um, uh, guys, remember, you could send us your questions. They can show up on Twitter. Um, but I wanted to ask, uh, it's, it seems so, you know, there, there's so many ways that this is applicable. I could run .NET um, interactive on my own machine. I can use it in browsers. I can use it in code spaces. Where, if, if I needed to start at one place, where would I start? Um, you know, in terms of most of the major investments and all the kind of latest features, uh, you could definitely just start off in Visual Studio Code. You can go to our the extension marketplace today and just search for .NET interactive. You can also see the notebook experiences that we've also been investing um, uh, in VS Code as well. So that's a really good place to start. But again, as I, was, as I was saying earlier, you could just go on a GitHub repo that has some PYMB notebooks and you can launch that in GitHub Code Spaces as well. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so I asked some selfish questions. Um, I noticed the KQL support. Was that Kusto or is that, am I? That's right? Okay, yes, yeah, that Kusto. is Kusto. So I can use this in my daily job, actually, because I'm always using Kusto, looking at like what our users are doing, how many people are running tests, all of that stuff. How do you all use uh, .NET Interactive in your daily job? Is there any like meta data analysis of Interactive itself going on? Yeah, well, as a, I suppose as a program manager or product manager, we usually look at um, a lot of you know, event data uh, from other places. So we use uh, we actually use KQL quite a bit against other uh, Azure Data Explorer, which is essentially the you know external name, and then internally we call it Kusto. But yeah, so it's been super helpful, and it's one of my requests. So I still remember back in the day, I kept asking, you know, Alan, when are we going to support SQL and KQL? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm super glad that we're actually here and talking about it. So it's very exciting. Absolutely, I think one of the most um, impactful things, at least for my everyday, is linking data to our customer story. Mm -hmm. So the fact that interactive and, and just notebooks in general can kind of 
document all of that in line and have the queries, because I'm sure all of my coworkers are sick to death of me copy and pasting Gusto queries into Outlook. They're never runnable. I missed like the, the links to open the query up in Azure and have the right databases and context and all of this stuff. But, but I have a point. I promise I have a point. I'm trying to make, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, back my arguments with data and, and link them into my everyday. Um, so, ah, that's just super, super impactful. Um, I think there was a lot of uh, excitement around interactive. Let's see, I, I think we do have one question here. So, um, can you use the C Sharp kernel to build a, or sorry, can you use C Sharp to build a kernel with .NET interactives that you could add Oracle or SQL support? In general, like, you know, just think about just any kind of database that you want to support. Um, and that's something that, you know, just go to our feature request on GitHub and you can collaborate with us, like, you know, thinking about things like in the relational world and you know, Postgres, MySQL, things like that. Um, it's definitely something we're open to having a conversation about. So definitely just reach out to us, very, you know, community focused in terms of these feature requests and additional support. Amazing. Okay, I do have another question because I do see so much activity on this. Do you know what like percentage of your code base right now is coming from the community as, as far as pull requests and, and open source contributions? Um, that's something we'll need to just double check with some of the yeah, engineering teams yeah, because definitely. we're not directly on the .NET Interactive team. Yeah. But I think it is really cool that you know we are just like partners of within Microsoft where we're just all coming together and just like investing in this experience together. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of just like even outside the .NET Interactive team where PRs are being submitted, just like PowerShell and T-SQL and um, KQL as well. So yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but that's definitely something we can go that's check okay. with our engineering team. Yeah, I have high hopes. I always want to, I like getting the data and oh my gosh, thank you so much to all the contributors out there who are watching right now. So much of what we do and what we're talking about these days. I think, uh, what was it? I, I think Rosalind is over like 50% of PR contributions are coming from viewers like you. And uh, I know Stephen Tube's blog posts on .NET 6 performance improvements specifically, he had to go, he went over 400 PRs just talking about those incremental little performance improvements. A ton of those came from the community and he called them out. And even the framework that he used, benchmark.net, awesome, awesome contribution. Just showing that like having people around our tools and everything, we'd be nothing without you all. It's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in.